Thank you very much for clicking on this video. I hope you find it useful. I spent a lot of time doing research and development on this head unit. Um, been through a lot of different iterations, used a lot of my own money, making costly mistakes, finding out, finding parts that didn't work, uh, to find the parts that do work together in harmony, and they created this unit. I hope that you're able to put to use a tablet you might not otherwise be using, that might just be sitting around collecting dust, or doing something cool um, to even exceed what I've done. I hope to see other people's creativity and see where this might take them. I have included in the description links to the Amazon list of all of the items that I have in my car currently, along with all of the items used to create this Android head unit. Feel free to reach out to me or leave a comment below, and I'll do my best to reply as soon as I have time. If you find this video useful, please give it a like and go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos like this. Thanks again for watching and enjoy the video. I'm going to start off with the first component, which will be the radio face. This will be the base of just about everything else that goes into the system. Now, depending on Depending on how your vehicle is designed, you may be able to get the double DIN. This is a single DIN where it has a slot for just a small radio face. <clears throat> the double DIN will have double, the, it'll have this entire space as one large opening. The reason I got this one is because I need space to mount the magnets at the corners. And if I had gone with the double DIN, I don't believe I would have enough space to securely mount the uh, neodymium magnets on these bottom corners. The next component is the one I just spoke about, the neodymium magnets. <clears throat> we'll be mounting these to the face. Oh my gosh, these are stuck together tight. These will be getting mounted to the face of the unit like so. One, two, three, and four, so that we can attach our tablet to the face here. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and attach these just for fun so we can get this part out of the way and um, I can show the process. I'm going to come back later and put these bolts in, but I'm going to go ahead and attach these now. So do this with caution. Don't, obviously, you don't want to put a screw through your finger or hurt yourself, but um, I'm just going to say I'm going to aim for an area that I'm not going to hit anything on the back side. I think right about here will do. And that's going to be the first guy here. All right, so when I started this, I got both a nine inch and a seven inch Nexus tablet. And what I'm noticing as I'm doing this install is that this seven inch tablet is not going to fit between those magnets. Now, I could try to find a way to put a cover over this and move these magnets in, but I wanna do this entire process with things that can be bought off of Amazon and nothing custom made at this time. So it looks like I'm going to have to go with the 9 inch tablet, which I kind of wanted to do anyways, but it's going to block some of the controls up here at the top. There's a uh, fuel economy, a status gauge and all this stuff. Um, now this will be able to obviously be pulled off and punch those buttons, but it may also block a little bit of the vents as well. Um, I'm quite all right with having the bigger tablet of the two there, which makes me happy. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the install for the 9 inch rather than the 7 inch tablet. So I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this little ridge here <clears throat> to my advantage. I don't know if you can see, but the bottom of this um, somewhat faces downward. So if I was to mount something flush to this, the tablet would be mounted completely flush. I would like the tablet to come up ever so slightly angled toward me, the driver, as I'm looking down toward the screen. So I'm going to use this ridge to my advantage and I'm going to mount the magnet with a bit of it touching this ridge so that I can have the bottom of the tablet come out ever so slightly and face toward me. Now remember, this doesn't have to be perfect because this part 
will rarely be seen except for when you have the tablet out of the vehicle. So if, if you can see, there's uh, these two are kind of riding up on this ridge a little bit to provide a little bit of kick out at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and mount our little magnets on the inside of this flexible case. So this, this will be the part that is attaching <clears throat> the, the tablet to these magnets so that it will appear as a faceplate. Another thing that I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to actually move these in a little bit so that they're hidden as much as possible behind the case. So I'm going to bring these in until that screw is as close as possible to this interior bit right here. So they're somewhat hidden behind this, this face plate. Okay. I want this to look as clean as possible, even though it's not the most professional thing in the world. I don't know if you can see that, but <clears throat> it's mostly hidden behind there. Now we can't go any lower than this because we have our air conditioner controls down below here. Uh, we may have a little bit of room for play. So what I'm going to do is with these magnets, I'm going to put these larger ones so we have a bit of room to play around with the, uh, with the thing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these like this and like this. So it, it'll be the larger one, not the, not the smaller ones. And what that will allow me to do is be able to slide this down a little bit and still have contact with the magnet above and, uh, you know, be able to play around with the surface somewhat, be able to slide it around. But I'm just with these two alone, this is held on here very, very well. Actually, what I could probably do is do this entire upper surface here with the magnets. Yeah, that'll work perfectly. So this will not block the camera cutout and I can magnetize this entire surface right here. So I have the adjustability to slide it up and down. So now that we got that done, you can see how you can just toss that on there and it's going to stick. Wish I had longer nails. Anyway, we'll get this done. That guy there. All right. Okay. Ooh, man. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to mount these two brackets. So this would this would be what holds the, the radio unit in once it's inside. And uh, I'm going to modify these so that I can put these as one of the like a low, like a lower lip just to make sure that this thing doesn't drop down when it hits a good hard bump and it doesn't slide down the magnets. So I'm actually going to be attaching these two together like so, but I need to cut off these um, these pieces right here. So I have a nice uh, surface to mount to, and then I'm gonna trim this down so I can mount this top piece to here and this piece to here, and kind of create a little shelf for everything to rest on. So it'll probably be a little bit easier with a torch. If I can do this without chopping off one of my fingers. I have, um, all right, now that I have cleared off this little piece right here, always remember to do this away from yourself. You don't want to end up with a razor knife stuck in your, in your own body. That would be very unpleasant. Um, so I've, I've, I've cleared off this surface and I've already modified one of the first of the two of these. And essentially it's relatively easy to do. Um, what I did is, uh, what, I, what I do is I score the plastic here, right where I want it to, uh, where I want to make the cut. I score it as deeply as I can here. I don't, need, I don't need to cut through the entire, the entire thing. Then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to score the bottom, right around that same spot, same distance from the edge. And then I'm just going to snap it. I'm just going to break it. It could be done by hand, 
can do it on the edge of the table. Comes off pretty easily, but this little hunk is out of the way. So now we can go ahead and begin to mount these two little pieces together. It's gonna to require some self-tapping screws. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and attach that now. I'm going to attach the top piece first. I'm going to mount this flush with the face. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit it with a little tapper here. And one more so it doesn't angle about. Cool. So this is going to be our little mounting point. This guy has a bit too much play in it. I'm going to put this guy over here. There we go. No play. Right, so that's nice and that's nice and flush here, and is ready for our other little guy right here to be the little base. All about that base. So let's see here. I'm going to start a new hole. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm angling this whole assembly forward so that I can get this as level as possible at the bottom. Gonna... Put that guy there. Let's see. Put this guy. So now we have our little tray where all of this can nicely sit and no big bumps are going to knock it off. It's going to be all nice and neat. So this guy will keep, keep it roughly attached to the face, very easily to remove. And then this will keep it from getting knocked down and sliding down the face of the, of the unit. Next, we need to deal with the tablet itself. Now, the last thing you want is a bunch of glare coming off of the tablet into your face as you're driving down the road and the sun's setting behind you and you can't see your tablet whatsoever or you're seeing the reflection of the person in the seat behind you. So I highly recommend getting a matte screen protector, anti-glare matte screen protector, and obviously give it a real good cleaning before you apply the, um, the screen protector so there's no fingerprints, no dust, no crumbs, anything on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and apply that now. It has this nice little step one, step two deal. So you're going to peel this off and this is going to peel off the stuff on the sticky side. And use this little tab to go ahead and position it. Line it up with the, line it up with the camera hole and the speaker grills. Not as good as it's going to get. <clears throat> Not perfect, but close enough. So now we're just going to take and run these bubbles out. Once you have your screen protector applied, go ahead and install the tablet into the case that we'll be using. Um, also keep in mind, when you're installing the magnets in the case, you don't want to put them too close to the edge because this case needs to flex some. And if you have the magnets all the way to the edge, it won't be able to wrap around nice and neatly um, around, the, around, the edge of the, around the edge of the tablet. Also, while I'm indoors, I want to demonstrate the difference between the regular screen and a matte screen protector, and the difference is quite noticeable. Uh, you'll definitely want to get a matte screen protector. Uh, it, it not only does it protect from fingerprints and smearing, 
uh, but it's also anti-reflective. So this is what the regular screen would look like. So here's me, here's my whole setup. You can see absolutely every little detail is practically a mirror here. And then if you look at the mat, like all you're getting is this kind of ghost image and that light over there, you can hardly make it out. So I'm gonna actually uh, show you what it looks like in the other one. You know, you got this full light. Now imagine that's a sunset behind you or a sunrise and you, you, you'll you have a tough time making out anything that's on the, the face of that tablet. Now this, you can see perfectly. You know, there's 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 no issues at all whatsoever here. You know, the, the frosting does nothing but hide the glare and um, you know, make the tablet more usable, more readable. I highly recommend using one of these. Now let's talk about the tablet. So what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna need two, there's two critical apps that I'd like to talk about. One is Car Launcher, one is Rotation. Um, if you wanna make this into a head unit, uh, I definitely recommend the Rotation. Now the reason being is uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and stop this. It's gonna go back to the system default of Auto Rotate. So when you, uh, when you change the orientation of the screen, everything pops back to portrait mode. Now the problem with this is apps like Lyft Driver, I drive for Lyft, will force the screen into a portrait mode. Now that's not gonna work very well with our, with our deal we got going on here. So what we can do is we can force this into landscape mode and, and how we can do that is we can go in here to this rotation orientation manager, put forced landscape, hit the play button, the rotation service is started, forced landscape. So now when we go back to our app, we open our Lyft driver app, <clears throat> it's now forced into landscape mode. So what, we can have the, uh, the Lyft driver app over here, and then beside that, the play music app. So we can be doing our navigation over here, we can resize that, make that a little bit smaller, and uh, we have our music controls over here so that the, the, the music app is not being killed and at the same time we're doing our navigation. The other app is Car Launcher, which is rather cool. It's a, essentially a home screen, it replaces your home screen. So essentially you can have, you can custom design all of this to have your audio controls, your most recent apps here. So this can actually appear to be like the head unit of, you know, like an aftermarket head unit. Uh, you can have all your little uh, volume controls, um, music controls and whatnot, all, all right here on the main home screen. And you can set up some other information from the OBD2 and, um, and uh, also use GPS and you can have weather and obviously your time clock here as well. All of this lends itself to a more natural experience in the car where you have these large controls that you're able to touch uh, without having to pop back and forth and try to aim for these little tiny tap targets. So that would be the other, the other one that I recommend. Now I went out and I purchased a little Bluetooth dongle uh, from o uh, it's OBD Link, and I'm able to read the information from the car through this app, uh, trouble codes, diagnostics, real-time gauges, so on and so forth. So these are the three. Um, if you have the money, I think it's uh, about $99 to get the OBD2 Link, um, but I highly recommend that. It's kind of clever to be able to have that information displayed as well. So rotation, car launcher, and OBD Link. Obviously, your music apps and your driving apps, whatever else you'd like to have on here. But remember, you want to be taking this in and out with you. You don't want to leave this in the car. Uh, this is just a prime target for someone to either steal it, but even if it's not getting stolen, you don't want this being subjected to the elements. The, the extreme heat and extreme cold that the vehicles will experience throughout the year is going gonna, is gonna to be hell on your tablet. So this is designed to be removable. Take it inside with you. Take it with you. Now, these are older devices. Um, the Nexus, let's see, the Nexus 7, I think, stopped being produced in 2012. Uh, you guys can feel free to correct me in the comments. And the Nexus 9, I think, was last produced in 2013, 2013 to 2014. So these are aged devices. They cannot handle tons and tons of apps and a bunch of stuff in RAM. Uh, so I highly recommend just sticking to the very basics so that these apps are not being killed in the background and you're not running into issues and everything runs nice and smoothly. Essentially the unit boils down to three major components. Um, the, the most important of which is this harness here where you'll see the audio controls coming off on the left hand side and the power coming out on the right. Now the, this is a four channel audio system uh, with the harness here that I've had to adapt down to a two channel. Uh, so you'll see 
what is this, eight wires here and four wires down here because I've had to make, you know, blend them together to get the two channel audio. This is the smallest um, little unit that I could find. If I could find a four channel of this size, that would be wonderful. Uh, I, I guess I'll probably have to do a little bit more searching. So anyways, that's the audio side of things and that connects to this upper receiver right here on the, uh, on the amp. Um, same deal with the power, comes down here have a little junction going on at this point here where this is splitting off and going to the bottom connector of the amp to provide power to the amp and then splitting off in this direction. Um, ideally I could have probably made this connection a lot shorter but this is going to three um, you know DC 12 volt outlets. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the car and I'm going to show you what else connects to this to make this whole system complete and power the tablet uh, the Bluetooth, I have a dash cam and a um, Uber slash Lyft light uh, that I can change colors with with a remote. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, move the camera into the car and show you what this looks like all installed and nice and neatly packaged. It's a beautiful Valentine's Day, 70 something degrees outside today. So I figured today would be a great day to go ahead and walk through my current setup. So as you can see, already approaching the vehicle, there's a bunch of wires here. Not the most attractive looking setup. Um, I have this really nice magnetic mount here next to the, to the regular stereo. And in behind this case, I have uh, the metal pad stuck in here. So this just slaps on here. And then I have this one connection that both powers and does audio. So there's no need for a bunch of other connections. And what I'll show you is the, um, the two sides of this are the uh, the charging cable here so this actually lights up and does a little LED light show and uh, it's coming from this dual adapter here and this is actually going to be part of the um, the new setup this little guy right here so um, that connects there let's see if I can get on camera the, uh, the little the light show here uh, there we go So that, that's the, uh, the little light show that kind of happens when I, when I connect the power. So you get this little trail going from the charger up to the phone. Um, but this clever little splitter allows me to have both um, audio and um, charging at the same time through a USB-C connection to my phone. This, um, this right here is a splitter, audio splitter for both the, uh, let me hang this back up here. We've got the audio out, like the, the PC green line audio out, and then to the microphone. So this is actually the same microphone that I'll be repurposing to use with the new audio setup, the new head unit. Um, so you see this little split right here, and then this audio cable goes down and back up. And the previous owner, one of the previous owners, had installed a auxiliary jack here with a little power switch that activates it right here. There's some interesting stuff going on behind the scenes with this. This actually powers on a radio, mm, I don't know how to call it, I guess like a transmitter that's behind the unit that plugs in through the antenna and broadcasts over like 89.7 FM or something like that. But the issue with that is there's an area in Fort Worth, like right downtown, where there's some interference from that. So I get static every time I'm downtown. Um, but nevertheless, uh, this was installed as kind of like an aftermarket deal. And also, uh, let's see here, this uh, USB powered outlet. This is also not a factory deal. So this was also wired into, into that power source. So I have this splitter here going into the audio jack. And this splitter, I have another cable going to the back seat. Now, the other thing that I have connected to this, to this power source is the USB charger that runs up here and charges my little lift amp. Um, and then to the right of this is the power. And now this snakes all the way down, up and around through the, uh, through the little, through the A pillar here, up, and then I have it dropping down see if I can get that there we go dropping down behind the mirror and powering my my 360 degree dash cam I really love this thing I highly recommend it um, I'll leave a link to the Amazon uh, store where you can purchase it yourself 
What I would like to do, and, and one of the reasons behind me doing this whole thing and swapping out this head unit, is I want a nice clean look here, and I, w I really want to remove all of these accessories here and, and run with this completely closed, to so have this look as clean as possible, just flowing right up into the, into the head unit that I'm getting ready to set up. Um, in the console, there's another uh, power port, and running out of that is gonna be the charger for the rear seats. One benefit of ha having leather seats is it's easy to attach a vinyl to it. So I've attached my, um, my Instagram tag to the back of my seat, somewhat like a jersey. And if you, uh, if you ever get into a traditional taxi cab, you'll always see that usually like somewhere on the dash, they have their like ID or something like that, their taxi cab ID, letting people know who they are and some kind of little registration number. And I also add a little, a little air freshener here for the, because mo generally most passengers I get are riding in this area, in this back seat. Um, so they, they have my little Instagram deal here, charger, air freshener, uh, makes, makes the experience a little bit nicer for them. Other, other little things that I've done is I've added LED lighting to all of the interior. So all of the interior lights, nice and clean LEDs, the footwell lighting. It's a nice clean experience when, when, uh, when the guest gets in. The other thing that I've included is um, my wife was nice enough to print me up a photo book. So I have a, a photo book of all the family photos for, uh, for guests to take a look at as I'm, as I'm riding. Generally, I get into talking about my family and sometimes I find occasion to share with them, you know, about my children. So I have all my children from youngest to oldest in here. And then at the very end, my little clone here. At the very end, she was nice enough to include some of my, some pictures from my events where I won and I got some trophies and was having a good time. Uh, so that kind of transitions into the next layer of conversation, which is my racing career. So that's a, that's a handy little thing to have back there. Anything you can put in here to have a good conversation starter, uh, I definitely recommend going for it. It definitely makes the ride better and, uh, you know, y y the conversations flow and generally, generally lead to better tips. A few other tips I'd like to add not related to the audio system is uh, getting one of these little seats uh, one of these little memory foam deals definitely makes your your time in the car a lot nicer and, and it's able to, you're able to spend longer driving without having so much fatigue um, another thing that I keep is this this air sanitizer it's relatively strong you wouldn't want to spray too much of it but it's a great way to get rid of the odor of smoke uh, a lot of people jump in the car after having a fresh cigarette um, so you get all of that smell as they're entering the car and it lingers. Uh, the fun part is popping open all of this and um, my favorite tool for this is rather odd. It's actually a fingernail clipper using the smooth side of the fingernail clipper to get up underneath it here. That way you're not damaging anything. You don't need any special tools. And with a little suggestion Oh, this guy here We'll go ahead and just pop right out on the back side of here. We've got a little clip And our vents are out of the way next step is Make this a little bit easier. I'm gonna go ahead and put the car in neutral put on the parking brake Turn it back off now. I won't be able to fully remove the key So I'm gonna shut the door so we don't have to hear that sound. The next step will be popping off the little surround here that goes around. I'm sorry for the audio. Goes around the cigarette lighter, an ashtray, and this guy will raise right up. I'm gonna start by removing the ashtray two Phillips screws. So this is going to be an eight millimeter on the top two, and it's going to be a seven millimeter down here at the ashtray. Switch over to my seven mil. All right, now with this guy out of the way, let's go ahead and disconnect them. Actually, we could probably just set them to the side. We don't need to get too crazy with it. And then inside under the uh, under the climate control are two more bolts. Also eight millimeter. All right, now this guy comes out. Nice and easy. And I'm gonna go ahead and 
disconnect all the pigtails in the rear. So start from left to right and we're out. All right, now before I toss this to the side, the next thing I need to do is remove the climate control portion from the head unit assembly. As we'll be reattaching that to our to our new head unit. So I got my climate control that's going to go ahead and go underneath of the new head unit. So say goodbye to this guy. Ooh, oh my God, trying not to scratch the leather. This is a, a, a great time to go ahead and demonstrate the equipment that is already in here. So there is a fused connection going to, uh, to this guy right here. And what this is doing is it's putting audio out through the antenna. It's from iSimple to Universal Radio Input. IS32 is the model number. Oh, here we go. Here's the factory antenna. So the factory antenna is plugging into this adapter right here, and one line is going to the audio, and one line is going to the antenna. So this line is going back to, the, to that box where it's taking both the antenna and the 3.5 millimeter auxiliary jack, and then it's putting it all out as an audio, uh, almost like a coaxial cable into the antenna plug. All right, before we get much further into this, I wanna go ahead and test the head unit and make sure that this is actually going to work before I waste a whole bunch more time getting this installed. And we can go ahead and test this out for the first time and see if we've done it correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Let's see if first of all we can get power. All right, so we're connected. I need to go ahead and crank accessory power. Oh, what the heck was that? All right, I've got accessory power. Now, unfortunately, this is not charging, but let's test out the stereo and see if we've got that hooked up correctly. And I also need to adjust the gain. So right now, this thing's maxed out. I'm going to turn this way, 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 way down. And we're going to start from, uh, from nice and low. So I'm actually going to mute this section because I don't want to get a copyright strike. But I'm going to, um, I'm going to play some music here to test this out, make sure we've got everything hooked up correctly. All right, so what I've discovered is when I've connected this Bluetooth connection here, um, what's happening is for some reason the, the volume is dropping considerably, and I don't know if that's an issue with the amount of power that the, uh, that the amp is receiving, and it's, I, I have no idea. I've never done this before. I am not a audio technician. Uh, so what I'm going to try now is I'm going to go ahead and unplug the Bluetooth connection. I'm going to unplug the output from the... Uh, from the tablet's connection, and I'm going to try to do Bluetooth only. I'm going to connect the tablet to the Bluetooth and see if being connected to the Bluetooth, I can get a nice full boost from the Bluetooth audio. So let's see how that works because that Bluetooth connection is powered. Uh, let's see how that goes. Okay, it seems as if that might be the way to go. The only issue is I need to see if it will actually take audio over that connection, which I doubt because it's all tucked in there and I haven't seen any microphone. So we're gonna test this out now. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. Huh. Here's a matching video. So surprising, surprisingly enough, it looks like it must be using the microphones built into the tablet to receive audio. So this actually, this might actually work. Um, I don't know if it's gonna work for phone calls, but it's definitely something I need to test out. Uh, so it, I might just go ahead and leave that being the only audio connection. And I'm gonna disconnect the microphone and the audio out. 
So that'll simplify some of this mess right here. And see if I can go ahead and just get a simple charger going on here, uh, because right now that connection is not charging the tablet. A few other complications have arisen, um, one of which is that ringing noise that you hear. I'm not sure if it's making it over the, uh, the microphone, but there's a high-pitched whining sound that's directly associated with this uh, USB charger. The other thing that I found is when broadcasting the sound over Bluetooth, just with the singular Bluetooth connector, just a single Bluetooth guy right here, without the other audio setup, um, I was able to get the most volume out of this particular setup. Also, the OTG cable that has both the connection for the charger and the connection to the tablet, and then the USB deal uh, to do the audio in and out is not going to work. And, and this is something that I kept finding in my research that USB micro um, does not have the ability to charge and OTG at the same time. Whereas USB-C does, as you saw that worked perfectly with my phone, I was able to get audio out and charge the phone at the same time as, as in and outputting audio. Um, it's just a simple limitation of the tablet. If I had a newer tablet with a USB-C connection, that would not be an issue. But this is the one I have to work with and I'm not ponying up the money to buy a newer tablet. Okay, this has been a learning process that I'm going through as you guys are watching. Um, I'm not an audio technician. This is something I've never done before. It's something I'm, I'm learning as I'm going and I'm having an absolute blast discovering all of this. I'm sure that some of the things that I've come across in this process of discovery might be cringeworthy to some that are watching this that do have the professional knowledge and do this for a living. Um, but uh, this is for those folks that want to do something simple and want to put to use one of their existing Android tablets uh, without hacking up the, the factory system. I've gone ahead and I've attached the uh, air conditioner controls right here, as you can see. So this is essentially ready to go ahead and be, be installed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it now and um, put everything together so you guys can see what the final product will look like. This harness is going to be connected here. Sorry. Yeah. This harness is going to connect to the factory unit. And these two guys down here connect to the climate controls. The part that I wanted to show you in the car is going to be this, this mess that I got going on right here. Okay. So this is the power plug for my dash cam. Uh, which is a little bit out of frame, sorry. Uh, this is just right up here on the front window. I'll show you uh, a little walk around in the car once I have this all installed. And then um, this right here is going to be for the Bluetooth. This is the Bluetooth. And this guy right here is going to be for my uh, Lyft and Uber light, uh, which I have this little cutesy little remote that I can put on different colors, purple for, uh, for Lyft, white for Uber, and... Um, let my, let my riders look at something cool there in the front window. Um, okay, so that covers that. Then I have my audio plug right here. This is simply an extension. This little short guy right here. Not necessary, but it's there. Um, essentially, that helps me make the, t the turn from here up with this little 90 degree guy right here. So this little 90 degree turn is going to go into the audio input that goes into the amp. Note that there's a red and a white input here, and that needs to line up with the red and white input on the amp. So that's gonna go in there, and there's my audio. Now, very important, behind, behind this audio jack, this guy right here is incredibly important. This is a ground loop noise isolator. Now, what you will get, because your phone or your tablet is connected to the same circuit that the audio is being uh, powered by, you're gonna get a static, uh, like these little beeping, like all kind of interference from this ground loop. So you want all audio to pass through this guy right here. He's gonna eliminate that noise and it's gonna be clean and crisp audio being put into your amp. Behind this, I have a splitter. Um, this is for the Bluetooth audio and the uh, auxiliary jack that was left behind from the previous owner's install. So I ran this little audio jack that, that's here on the dash uh, sorry, on the console, and I ran that up behind all of this and into here. So I still have an auxiliary, um, an external auxiliary input that I can go ahead and plug um, in a little Bluetooth dongle or a, a straight cable into. But this is, this is incredibly important. Please do not leave out this ground loop uh, isolator. Or you'll definitely regret that. So that's my audio side of things that's going in here. 
And then I have my plugs. So all, all this is gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and connect all of these behind the dash. And then I have this little guy sitting up here in the front. He's gonna come up here. And this is gonna be my power for the tablet. I have a nice fast charger, um, Qualcomm 3 capable. You know, it's fast enough to charge the tablet uh, while it is full on with Waze and, uh, and Uber or the Lyft app. So there's no issue of it draining battery while it's, while it's running. Um, I just simply looped the, uh, the power line for the tablet in behind here, coming out over here so it's nice and clean and ready for me to plug into the side of the tablet. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all this into the dash. We're gonna clean all this up and I'm gonna show you what it looks like with it all put together and nice and clean. Uh, all the dash reassembled and I'll, I'll take you for a little tour around the car. Also, one more thing to note is cable management. Um, so essentially what I've done here is I just took this thing and I've looped it around here a few times. So I've looped this around once, got my little harness poking out here and I looped the, uh, the, power, the power cable um, up and around the top. Uh, and so I just have this all here. So it's nice and clean and it's gonna, it's gonna smoothly go in on both sides. There's nothing jamming, it's not a big crazy mess. So the, uh, all of the connectors, all the little harness connectors will be here, here and here and it'll go into the dash nice and easy. It won't be a, a difficult install. All right, so this is what the unit looks like all plugged in and, uh, and ready to go. Got my audio cable plugged in, got my little guy right here, the ground loop uh, isolator, noise isolator. Got my dash cam plugged in here, uh, my tablet here, uh, my Bluetooth and my light here. Now I, I want all of these somewhat accessible even once this is all installed. I want to be able to take out the tablet and you know fiddle with these if I need to, if I need to reset something or whatever have you. I want to be able to have access to as much of this as possible without disassembling the dash. And uh, also keep in mind like with this top piece being able to pop out, I'm able to access a few things with it still installed, I can still get my hand down in here and, and mess with a few of these devices if I need to. If I need to add a, you know, different audio inputs or do something with these charging plugs, it's all here for me to play with if I need to. Installation is the opposite of the removal process. I've got the two eight millimeter bolts up top, two eight millimeter bolts down below. The, uh, the ashtray and the cigarette lighter slash 12 volt charger can now go in. Two Phillips head screws in the top and two seven millimeter bolts down at the bottom. Now we'll pop this, pop this piece of the console back on. I ha for me, on, on my setup, I have to be mindful of these audio cables that they're not getting jammed up in the shift linkage here. So I'm gonna guide those little audio, that, that little audio cable off to the sides. Let me go ahead and plug this in here and here so I don't scratch the dash like I've already done. And then I'm going to go back here and give it some force, and that's back into place. Now the last piece is going to be this, this vent assembly right here. I just want to make sure before I put that together that I have this where I need it to be. All of these chargers and audio devices are exactly where I need them. This little guy's lined up, so this is all good. I'm going to go ahead and install my vent. Ta-da! The dash is together. The unit is installed, that simple. Um, oh, another modification that I made um, since the last video is I went ahead and I added two more screws down here to really give some strength to this, this shelf right here. I noticed that this was starting to crack um, because there just wasn't enough um, plastic here to tie all this together. So over time, as I was hitting the audio control, or the, you know, the volume or the power button, this was starting to break away. Uh, so I installed these down here, so now this has a nice firm base. And now the last piece of the puzzle, which is the tablet. And that's just going to snap here into place. I'm going to connect our little power connector there, and it's all set and ready to go. I've got the tablet connected. As you can see, it's nice and clear. There's no reflection, no glare. Uh, I have the car launcher as my home launcher, so I have my audio controls over here. To prevent getting a copyright strike, I'm not going to play anything, but I have my most frequently used apps down here. I can add more if I'd like. Got my time, got some audio controls over here. I can go ahead and adjust the audio volume as needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the car. You're gonna hear the audio beep of the Bluetooth connecting. This will, I'm gonna go ahead and connect to the Bluetooth and um, I'll open up YouTube and play some audio for you. Okay, that indicates that we're connected now. So I'm gonna hop into, let's see, I'll go over here to YouTube. Oh. 
I have here a video of me drifting around in the LS, so you can hear the audio here. So there you have it, nice and clean. So I can go ahead and fire up my Waze app. And go ahead and put that on split screen with my Lyft app. We'll resize that a little bit, get this guy over here. A little bit more real estate for the maps. And we're all set. So this is my current setup in the vehicle. I'm loving it right now. It's uh, it's been wonderful for me so far. Had no issues with it. Oh, got a little, got an email just now. Sorry about that, y'all. One of the apps that I mentioned while I was going through the walkthrough uh, on the interior of the house was this app, the uh, OBD2 Link, uh, OBD Link. And I, I just wanted to quickly demonstrate some of the things that it's capable of. So this is reading real time um, the data from the OBD sensor. So uh, this is my actual RPM. As I give it throttle, it will go ahead and rise. Um, now, all of these are customizable. I can put them all in analog or digital, and I can add or remove other gauges. And um, there's a bunch of different pages. Um, wow, look at my boost. That's not good. <laughs> anyway, um, so this can be set up to be like an in-dash uh, kind of um, dashboard, if you will. Uh, it'll run diagnostic, trouble codes, the trouble codes, uh, freeze frame, PID values, report. So my oxygen sensors don't have a readout nor my freeze frame, um, but everything else here, no, no trouble codes. Uh, let's see, data is available. So um, readiness standard, okay. Uh, so this goes through my uh, malfunction indicator li lights, um, what's available, what's not available, everything's checking out. Uh, let's see, secondary air system, AC refrigerant, available complete, I don't know. Anyways, um, all the main stuff is working correctly here. Onboard monitoring, uh, let's see, rich, lean, manufacturer defined, gas, ex exhaust gas, exhaust sensor, catalyst, EGR, um, EVAP, misfire all the misfire data on all eight cylinders is looking good um, the only thing I have here is this EGR monitor and uh, let's see minimum maximum I don't know something's going on with the uh, exhaust gas recirculation uh, let's see vehicle information so I got my VIN number here uh, calibration ID calibration verification number that's interesting. And uh, the PID snapshot. This is my fuel system, throttle position, yada, yada, yada. And uh, voltage. I mean, pretty much every little output you'd possibly want out of your vehicle has it here on, uh, on all this information. Settings, logs. So this will actually keep track of your, um, your trip stats on your miles per gallon. Anyway, so this is a clever little thing to have available. The only issue that I have with um, with the size of this is the access to these um, to these buttons up here. So I got my fuel reset set up in status, but it's not too difficult to get to just pulling the uh, pulling the tablet down. Sorry for the wind noise, but I wanted to show you a few things from outside of the vehicle. So this is my little uh, acrylic lift slash Uber light here. And it's in, it's in demo mode right now. Obviously, it looks a lot better at night. Um, but this is running through the different little colors that it does. And uh, it's a cool little way that at night you can kind of stand out from the rest of the crowd. I went ahead and I got this little guy off of Amazon. Tells you uh, you got the charger available, you know, some safety stuff. And recommends tipping and, uh, and giving you a nice review. And then over here, I have... <sighs> A three-in-one. This has got the uh, the lightning, the USB-C, and micro USB connections right here, and they will all actually charge devices at the same time. So all of these are receiving power. 
This is plugged into my console here, and I simply hang it with this little household, uh, let's see, photo, like out, you know, like picture frame hook or whatever. I just have that hanging right there, so they, they're over here seeing that the charger is available, and I got the charger right here. Shout out to Drift Island, one of the pages covering drifting and other motorsports in Puerto Rico. Definitely give them a follow on Facebook. And uh, that's it for now, y'all. Thanks for watching my video, and uh, let me know if you have any questions, comments. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that I've left out here, um, different shortcuts that, uh, that you, may have, you may know of that uh, I'm unaware of. And for you audio experts, I'm sure this was probably excruciating and cringeworthy to watch. But hey, I got it done. I'm, I'm uh, your average Joe. I've never done anything with audio before in my life. So this is definitely a first for me, and it's been a success. A lot of my riders have commented and asked me questions about this whole setup that I've got going on. Uh, so that's the reason I'm putting together this video, is to help you all uh, put your own head unit together and make use of an Android tablet that you might, might not otherwise be using. Anyways, thanks for tuning in, guys. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. Talk to you later.